We are working on the GRE issue essay. My name is Laura Aitchison and I'm a test prep expert. I've helped over 4,000 students since 2009 and I'm delighted to help you today. For the directions when it comes to the issue essay, you want to know these and basically have them memorized ahead of time so you know what's going to be asked of you. They'll always tell you that you will be given a brief quotation that states or implies a topic of general interest along with explicit instructions on how to respond to that topic. Your response will be evaluated according to how well you, and they give you five specific things. First, you have to respond to the specific directions the task gives you, and we'll show you the three different types that they might ask about. Reflect on the complexities of the issue. Organize and develop your thoughts. Support your reasoning with relevant examples. And finally, express yourself in standard written English. Now, the three different ways they may ask you to address an issue essay is the following. And the second one listed here, we'll actually take a look at a prompt with that type of task, and then we'll show you the template, the method, and how to write all of it out. So the first option is they may ask you to write a response in which you examine your own position on the statement. So a statement will be provided, and as I said before, it's going to be of general interest, meaning it's going to be a broad topic. So whether it has to do with education or goals or economics, even with economics, you're not going to have to have any background knowledge. They're just going to give you something, a very broad sweeping topic so that you can take either position. There's no right answer with this type of essay. So the first one, as I had mentioned before, write a response in which you examine your own position on the statement. And then here's the important part. Explore the extent to which you either not both, either agree or disagree with it and support your reasoning with evidence and or examples. That's something that's going to be in all three of the tasks. You must provide evidence and or examples. Be sure to reflect on ways in which this statement might or might not be true and how this informs your thinking on the subject. That last part is really tricky if you're not sure how to incorporate it into your essay. With the template that we're going to show you, it's actually going to go in a very specific spot, either the paragraph right before the conclusion or within the conclusion. You don't want to forget that part. Colleges look to make sure you've scored at least a four in this section. A four out of six indicates that you provided an adequate essay. You presented your ideas, you were clear, and you were able to convey what you were thinking and what your thesis was was clearly supported by your examples. A five helps to bolster your overall admissions packet and then a six really can wow colleges. And that last sentence there within the task, the be sure to reflect on ways in which the statement might or might not be true, is really important. And it is incorporated in the other two tasks that you might have. So the second task, and like I said, we're going to look at a prompt for that. The second task is write your own response to the recommendation in which you discuss why you either, not both, either agree or disagree with it. Support your response again with evidence and or examples. Use a hypothetical set of circumstances to illustrate the consequences of accepting or rejecting the recommendation and explain how this informs your thinking. So out of these three tasks, you're not going to have all three. It's going to be one of the three. And what's really important is in this second one, and we'll look at this more closely, it says to use a hypothetical set of circumstances. The circumstances that you pick you don't have to cite with a source. You don't have to have read it somewhere in an article, but you do want to be as specific as possible. So rather than saying something like, doctors help patients, that's true, but it's not very specific. You can say something like, primary care physicians, which is a more specific kind of doctor, it's a family doctor, help geriatric patients, so older patients, by providing not only, so more sophisticated wording, not only help for existing conditions, but also preventative care. That's way more specific than saying doctors help people. And that's what they're looking for. They want you to provide examples that are specific and relevant. Now the final option that you might have is, and again, they'll just give you one out of the three. They might ask you to develop a response to the claim in which you discuss whether or not you agree with it. So again, whether or not, not both, one or the other. Focus specifically on the most powerful or compelling examples that could be used to refute your position. So again, you have to demonstrate that you've thought about all possibilities. You've picked one side, 
you're clearly providing examples that support it, but you haven't completely dismissed the other side. You recognize that someone might disagree with you and you need to acknowledge that. Now this is a sample prompt. We had mentioned that we're gonna look at the second option, which is to write your own response to the recommendation, and we're gonna show you how to do that. So the statement that they provide, this is the recommendation we have to look at. People who work in the arts and humanities should earn less than those who work in the sciences and economics because the benefit of the arts and humanities to the population is less important than that of scientific or economic endeavors. Wow. Okay, so the good news is the first step of this is to actually figure out what's happening in either the issue or the argument. This method is for both the issue essay and the argument essay, so that's why we have that issue slash argument. So we have to actually take it apart and figure out what's happening, and we'll be sure to do that so that before we decide which side we're going to argue, we actually know what the recommendation is, what it means, and how we're going to interpret it. From there, we can decide what points we want to make. We do want to think about both sides of it before we make our decision to argue one way or the other. The only way to figure out which way is going to be more compelling is to actually think of examples. And in thinking of examples for the opposition, you'll actually use that later in your essay, so it's not a waste of time. You don't want to try to shave off minutes in the preparation to save time to type. That's really not going to work in your favor. What's going to wind up happening is you'll start typing sooner than you really should, and then you'll have to pause and think about what you're actually going to be typing. So we recommend that you take a good chunk of your time, those 30 minutes, a good part of that should be devoted to figuring out what the two different sides are, what examples can be used, what points can be made, and then deciding which one to argue before you even start typing. It's really important that you take the time to do that. That way you can completely organize and you have an idea of what's going to go into your essay before you start typing or writing it on paper. Typing your essay is really important. They can't read it unless you actually submit it. And then finally, proofreading shouldn't take you very long. The biggest thing is they want to know if you've actually read over what you wrote. It's not good to send something in that you didn't look at over at all. So any blatant typos, any gross misspellings, any punctuation that's missing, you want to catch those on the first sweep. It doesn't have to be perfect. It most certainly doesn't. But they do want to see that you actually read through what you wrote.